Okay, let's go on to step four now. This is going to be one of those steps where I don't know how you do it. There are going to be two different ways. If you remember step four is to get this into the GAC, the Global Assembly Cache. There are a couple of different ways. We can use GAC Util. Uh, let me show you here because I know sometimes my accent makes it difficult. Um, GAC Util is an executable that allows us to list what's in the global assembly cache, to add items to the global assembly cache, to remove items from the global assembly cache. Or a simple way is to just drag and drop into your assemblies folder. Now don't let me just say this, if you are working with the Express Editions or even with .NET Framework 3.3.5, the GAC utility may not be on your machine. This was something that was distributed with the .NET Framework, the original .NET Framework, and then through 1.1, and then they stopped sending it out in the .NET Framework and started putting it only in the SDKs, the Software Development Kits. So if you don't have the SDK installed for that particular .NET framework, you won't be able to manage the global assembly cache. You won't get GACUtil.exe. So you've got two things that you can do. You can use GACUtil if you're using the straight up Visual Studio. You've got it installed. Or you can go download the Visual Studio SDK. So you notice that on the program files I've got Microsoft SDKs and it's actually kind of weird what you had to do to get this. This, trying to think of like the name, Microsoft Windows SDK for .NET Framework 3.5 I think that says SDK. Sorry, that really is a K. Your eyes are just seeing that wrong. Uh, and so that's what you have to have and once you get the SDK then you're going to get somewhere in here you get the GAC Util I don't know there it is right there now I will also say it took 30 some odd minutes to download and install this SDK if you have Visual Studio the full blown one you don't need to go through that let me show you the other option that we have so if you don't want to deal with the GAC Util you can go to your Windows folder. I'm on Windows 2008, and here is the assembly folder. Okay, there's our global assembly cache. So I just go to my project, go find my DLL, and I'll see if this works in 2008. It's supposed to work. The Windows 7 commercials that I see on television show that I can wipe it that way and wipe it that way, and it stacks them. I don't know if it works in 2008. <laughs> no? All right. So anyway, I was trying to stack them. Uh, so here's my assembly. So really, it's just drag and drop and uh, oops, put it over here and put it into the global assembly cache. And so I come over to the assemblies and let's go see if I was actually successful. You'll be able to see Scott down here if I was. Um, Scott's DLL does not show up, so I didn't do it correctly. I may have to have been in this folder. That may have been my problem there. So just go ahead and stack you guys. So put it right there. And let's see, where is it? Right there. Okay, so you actually had to drill into that particular folder. And once you did, I'm able to put it in there. So it's now in the global assembly cache. If I use the GAC util, the dash lowercase l, I'd be able to list it out. Okay. Well, we've done four steps. Now it's time for step five. Now it's time to actually use it. So let's create ourselves an integration services project. We'll drag a script task onto the designer. And let's take a look. Uh, oh, I just use C sharp. Just sorry. Um, so here's what we have down here. So do you, you know, you need to make a reference using either using in C sharp or imports in Visual Basic. So now it's using the namespace here. So it was Scott's DLL. 
However, we haven't defined for C sharp here what Scott's DLL is. So step five is making a project reference to Scott's DLL. And so see, if I try to come down here and say and, and execute this, I don't get the little red squiggly, but if I close out of here and try to run this, I bet we get an error. And you can actually see it right there. It doesn't know. It had a binding error because it could not bind to Scott CLL. So here's how you do step five. You need to go to your view. I think it's the view window here. Um, and you need to go to your project explorer. And then you see the references. These are all of the references that we have. We need to add a new reference. And this is the interminably long screen. Um, come over here to .NET. And if you've done everything correctly, you can scroll down and you can find your custom DLL. There it is. And you can see the path to this. And notice this is where we deployed it. Okay, so this is why we need to deploy it so that we can use it inside and see it in our reference window. That's our SDK folder. This was the program files. So I say OK. And now this is going to stop giving me the red squiggly line. If I were to just close out, I would be able to execute this now, right? What did, uh, why did it give me a pain there? Um, and it didn't add it. Did I do something wrong? Did I hit cancel maybe and not save it? Let's just hit S. You can see it brings it in over here with the Project Explorer. Does it not save it? Hmm, I'm still, uh, let me close out and open it back up. There are some weird things. Out. What is going on? Why is it not bringing up? In this case, I've done probably something wrong. Um, let's, let's do this. I'll show you one way. I'm taking out the using Scott's DLL. I'm going to bring my reference back in. I'm going to show you a way that you could diagnose something like that. So I go to Scott's DLL. Um, and now if I double click on Scott's DLL, that's going to bring up the object browser. And so I can see in here what the class names are and that I want to actually use. I had it spelled wrong. That's the problem. You see I had the two lowercase l's in my using statement or in my imports statement. So I needed to make sure that, or I need to make sure these are capital L's. So again, to troubleshoot that, I went to the references, I added my reference, and just double click on it. And it brings it up right there, and then you can see your spelling. And you can close this, and using Scott's DLL, and even without referencing it or doing anything, I'm going to close it out down here. We should be able to execute this now, even though it's, it's not actually using it, but we are at least have a base. We know that it's, it's actually running. So script task, come back over here. Let's go ahead and create a copy. So now we get a red one again. <laughs> um, how weird. Why is it not persisting? My reference. You see that it's not loading my reference successfully. I keep loading it in. There it is. Comes back. So let's say var um, Scott's class equal new Scott's DLL dot my class and let's just do a silly little message box that shows uh, Scott's class doing a calculation multiplying 10 times 10 Oops. okay looks good let's go ahead and execute save here and if it works fine we get a hundred pop-up and we do okay so I don't, I don't know why that we're getting that particular you see that it's it's not remembering our reference list I'm trying to think what what's different here See, then of course it fails if 
we don't add that reference back in there that time. I don't know why. I'm wondering if that's a bug, uh, that it's not remembering the reference here. I don't know why it's not doing that. But sure enough, we save it, close it out, and it actually works. That's strange. Um, I mean, I can close it out and open it back up, I bet, and it still works. I mean, it's still... As long as I don't open the task again, I bet it works. Peculiar. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll go. I'm going to actually play around after this video with that. And if I find something interesting, then I'll post it at the end here. So, And if I don't, then it's just consider it to be a bug. Okay, so this was somewhat... Uh, really strange after I finished recording that I like I said I came back and I started playing around trying to figure out hey what's the the problem here and so I thought you know hey let me go ahead and try to add a VB version of this and let me show you what happened and I think this may show you why it was seeming so strange so let me go just open that project again notice that I did close the project and open open it back so I'm going to go just grab another script task. Let's just call this one first, the C-sharp version. Um, go now, let's make a VB version. And we'll disable you. Change you to VB. Edit. The VB environment, a little bit different when we go to the Project Explorer here. We don't get the references. Uh, .NET custom folder like we do, but we can right-click at the project level and go to Add Reference. And same screen, we get to find Scott. And when we say add, though, now we get an error message. So you, you didn't see that error message when we were working in C Sharp. Uh, so it basically says you get no template information found. So it says see the log. OK. And if you say OK, by the way, you can't actually do anything here. We, we do get it brought in here. So you can see it somewhat made the, the reference. But if we try to come to, or earlier when I was trying here, so Scott's class, um, I was not able to actually use it. And you can see that we get a, a type error here. It doesn't recognize what Scott's DLL is. So if we actually do try to use that, uh, it's not even able to get a list of the methods that Scott's class theoretically was able to do. It should say do a calculation, but it's just giving us generic VB uh, templates here to, to play with. So VB was completely unable to reference and use it. And so, well, I, I did what it said to do, which was go to, let me get all this out. It says go look in the application event log. And so we take a look in the event log. And it's, uh, it's actually a fair message that gave me a, some good ideas. It says the global temp uh, template information is out of date. So it says you need to go run this VSTA and you need to tell it to install the VS templates. Now let me go ahead and tell you, I have <coughs> excuse me, a somewhat different setup maybe than you do. So um, I'll give you my breakdown of what I have on this machine. So this is Windows 2008, SQL Server 2008, uh, Visual Studio uh, C Sharp 2008 Express, sorry, um, Express C Sharp and VB both and the web dev. So it could be, and my installation process that I did was one, two, and three. One, two, and three. So I did each of those. This installed a set of templates for Visual Studio for bids, right? B-I-D-S. It's horrible. Uh, and then there are a separate set of templates installed for each of these three. So it could be that there is a template problem. Um, 
I'm going to try this. So what I'm going to do is actually follow what it suggests to follow, which is to try to get it to do the VSTA install VS templates. I could spend 30 minutes or two hours or 30 seconds doing this. So I'm not going to record it on video, but I'm telling you here is my steps to try to solve this problem once and for all. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to go to back to the uh, add remove programs and I'm going to try to tell it to repair the installation here of my Visual Studio. I am thinking that it's something to do with the fact that I have both the Express editions installed and the SQL Server, that that somehow is causing some sort of a a template issue but I, that's a guess so I could be wrong but I'm gonna spend you know five minutes or so investigating and go from there so anyway I just wanted to show you how I would begin troubleshooting it and if you get this same problem I'd suggest you start that way too